Good afternoon, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. May I request you all to kindly switch off your mobile phones or put them on silent mode. Thank you. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all at Sapro House this afternoon for the 26th Sapro House lecture to be delivered by Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Angela Holguin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia. Mrs. Maria will be speaking on Colombia, a second opportunity on art. We extend, we extend a warm welcome to the Honorable Speaker, Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Angela Holguin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia. I will also take the opportunity to welcome Ambassador Dr. Silkan Sarma, Member, Governing Body and Governing Council of ICWA, and Distinguished Fellow at Center for Air Power Studies, who will share today's event. Allow me to brief about uh, allow me to brief you about today's program. The event will be shared by Ambassador Dr. Silkan Sarma, and first he will deliver the welcome remarks. Thereafter, Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Angela Holguin will deliver the 26th Sapro House lecture, and that will be followed by uh, question and answers. We have to conclude the event by 5 p.m. May I now request Ambassador Dr. Sarma to uh, give his welcome remarks and conduct, conduct the proceedings. Thank you. Your Excellency, a distinguished uh, guest, <coughs> Honorable Vice Minister, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are very uh, happy to receive uh, uh, in our midst today the Foreign Minister of Colombia, and she brings with her a vast experience and enormous uh, erudition 
she her her, her career uh, graph is uh, really very comprehensive she trained like our dipl us diplomats but then she's into politics and uh, the the lecture she's going to give us uh, talks about the new columbia uh, way back uh, in the uh, last you know last decades Colombia has been struggling, has been known to be struggling with uh, problems, but uh, now they are at a new stage. And uh, it is uh, really a great pleasure to hear from uh, Her Excellency, the Foreign Minister, how her country is uh, looking forward to uh, great things. And India's relations with Colombia uh, are also in a very good state at the moment. Uh, our trade is uh, doing well. And uh, the way India is looking at Latin America today is very different from what, what it used to be in the past. Uh, Latin American countries are very high on our radar. The economic relations are improving. And Colombia, because, because of its uh, size, population, and its uh, geostrategic location, has its own importance. So given these factors, her talk is bound to raise uh, considerable interest. And uh, I don't want to really come in the way between her and the audience. So I would, uh, she's uh, going to give a PowerPoint pres presentation, which is, again, uh, reflective of uh, the kind of uh, new generation of uh, leaders that we have. Uh, it's such a delight to, uh, to have a foreign minister giving a PowerPoint uh, presentation. So, Madam, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, I go there. Thank you. So, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for this invitation. It's uh, really an honor for me to be here. I am with the Minister of Trade, Industry and, and Commerce, uh, Trade, uh, Industry and Tourism of Colombia, Maria Lorena Gutierrez, the Vice Minister. Patti Londoño, and uh, our new ambassador to India, uh, Mrs. Clemencia Forero. He's uh, uh, a, a very known in Colombia because she's in the ministry for a long time in, in, in international affairs. Now she's ambassador to Australia and coming to ambassador to India. So thank you very much. I am, I am really happy to be here. Um, we have uh, a meetings with the minister tomorrow, and uh, it's, it's for Colombia really an opportunity to, to have this meeting with India in a relation that the, is, a, is a very good relation. As you say, the trades are good, but the, we can improve it, and we can strengthen that relationship. So this is uh, why uh, we are here. As you know, Colombia for decades uh, lived in a conflict, in uh, internal conflict with a uh, with, uh, a very, very damaged situation for the people of Colombia, for the country, and uh, finally, after 50 years, uh, President Santos uh, took the decision to go and to put all his politics and uh, his um, um, uh, all that he think about Colombia, or, or all that the, he decided that Colombia could be. Um, and in 2010, he starts uh, peace talking with the FARC. Um, and let me tell you just an, an anecdote that um, is something that um, is, is like the picture of Colombia. President Santos was Minister of Finance in 1999. And he came to New York in a very bad moment of Colombia. Uh, remember Pablo Escobar and remember the FARC in the worst moment of terrorism? Um, and he arrived to New York uh, to the banks and investors uh, just to see the support and to, to look for the support of, of, uh, of the investors in, in America. And um, in the moment that he made his presentation, uh, a bomb explodes in Colombia. Uh, so in that moment, one of the investors said to him, you know, minister, don't lose your time. If the war in Colombia is not over, Nobody is going to be there. No, no, nobody is going to be as an investor so in a country in the middle of a conflict. So if you want something, organize your house and then come back. And this is why uh, this is what 1999 and 2010, when he started his presidency, 
he took the decision that uh, we, we, we need uh, a different country, and this is through the peace agreement. So he started his peace agreement uh, in 2010. Finally, we signed last year um, and in September of 2016. And then, uh, the, unfortunately, uh, we lose the referendum for, for approve the that peace process, and we renegotiate again, and we pass through the Congress. And uh, in November 2016, finally, we signed. That, that agreement, and we are in, in the process of the implementation. But before that, and before I explain you what is the implementation of the agreement, I want to share with you some some uh, <coughs> figures, some some uh, some image that I think is most most important. That what happened between 2010 and 2017 or 16. Uh, before or during the uh, negotiation of the peace process. Um, Colombia has a um, really, as, as uh, <laughs> later we, we, stop, we spoke with the ambassador saying that the, the, the privilege of Colombia where is located. Uh, you know, it's in the middle of America with the Pacific and with the Caribbean. Um, really, it's, uh, it's, it's in the middle. So, um, I want just to remind you where it is and uh, how uh, the importance of that for the opportunity that Colombia could have. Uh, so we will start with um, doing a huge effort in infrastructure uh, with uh, uh, ports, airports, and roads. And here just to, to show you a, a small thing. Uh, we have already 51 before that. Yes, 51. Um, we, up, we we call upgrade is that we, uh, you know, we, uh, we become much more bigger, become become more international uh, airports. Uh, 51 airports in Colombia, two ports, Cartagena and Buenaventura, are the most efficient ports in the region, uh, in the Caribbean, Cartagena, in the Pacific, uh, Buenaventura, um, and now we have a huge connectivity since two years, or uh, this is a work that we have been doing for more than five years, but we have already, and, uh, uh, and this is with the peace. This is nothing different that the people believe in Colombia because of the end of the conflict. We have uh, 31 airlines um, in 2010. Today we have 10 more, and um, 35 international connections. So this is something that is, it, important for the trade in Colombia and important for, uh, for the investors in Colombia. And um, the, the next one is um, how was the infrastructure in roads uh, uh, in 2010 and how is today and how is going to President Santos leave the country in 2018? Um, and it's, uh, it's a huge effort that we are doing in terms of money. Uh, and, and we believe that part of the conflict um, is, is why uh, we are so isolated. And many, many places in Colombia, as important cities, isolate because of the lack of infrastructure. So the, we, we make a, a huge effort. Um, and this is the map we are going to leave in 2018. Uh, the next one is, um, you know, just to, to, to show how big are the, the 4G roads um, and how many kilometers we are doing. Uh, 5,400 kilometers, we are changing really, really the face of the Colombia in, a, in, a, in a many different ways. Um, so this is, um, in part of, of this effort is uh, thinking that when the peace agreement finally set up, uh, the country has to be prepared. And this is why we were since 2010. Um, we need, a, we need a, a better trade with many countries, but we, we have to have roads. We need to be connected. Uh, we need to be all these communities that was isolated and that um, in, a, in as many as small places can have you know, the connectivity for for half uh, um, for half the opportunities in the, in in different kind of crops uh, that you know Colombia unfortunately was a, a big a big um, producer of coca crops 
So this is part of the agreement. We have started already the eradication of many of those uh, of those uh, crops, and we need that for you know for change the life of, of the people. After the infrastructure. Please. The connectivity, what we are doing with the connectivity, and I think this is something that the, uh, many, many countries in the world have this. The 90%, 95% of the municipality in the countries are connected already. Um, and it's something that changed totally the opportunities uh, of the people in the rural area. And this is what we, we have to work, and, we, and this is part of the, part of the agreement how the people who live in the rural areas can be much more connected, much more with, uh, you know, with the facilities for, for have uh, a, a normal life and, and plenty of opportunities. We, one of the most important um, issue for President Santos is education. And I think for many uh, leaders in, in the world knows very well that the education is the key for for have a more uh, more um, more uh, equality in, in, in the in the uh, in the populations and uh, uh, there are more chance for for people to to have a, 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 a education after the a, a superior education so we are uh, we are doing very, very well in education, in n not only in the quantity of schools that we are doing, uh, that we call the mega schools, but also with the kind of, um, you know, the education for the people without opportunities, education for the people who are in, in the poverty, uh, but they are, are really a, a very good students. So we are giving uh, that uh, that uh, opportunity for many, many of of those uh, children that they don't have, you know, any kind of education before because of the poverty. Now they can go to the universities. They can uh, they can do their schools in in um, uh, superior and elementary school. Uh, it's uh, it's free. Uh, so this is a decision that the President Santos took in 2010. And, and I think we are improving so much. We have, for example, the people who are coming to the, the university now is 51% of the students that uh, leave the high school before what, something like 32. So it's, it's really an, an improvement in, in uh, uh, higher education. So the, the other issue that we are working very hard is the health of the people. And um, in, 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 this, um, in this area, Colombia now offers a comprehensive package for, uh, for services and technology uh, for everybody. 97% uh, today have a health insurance plan. Um, this is something that is, uh, as you know, it's a, it's a very expensive. We are 49 million people, and, um, and this is something that we want to improve more, but uh, but um, it's uh, it's quite expensive. It's uh, it's something that uh, for for any country the the health is one of the most complicated issue. Um, but now we we have this 97 percent, and and uh, we we believe that is uh, already something important. Um, in the in the case of the regions with the vaccines, we can arrive today to more than 26 vaccines um, in a free manner in the whole country. Uh, and this is something uh, important. And uh, now with, uh, with the borders, then they are uh, some complicated things in, in terms of health. Um, we are improving uh, so much. Um, in, the, in, the, in the case of the poverty reduction, um, this is one of the things that the President Santos worked since the beginning. Uh, and we can say today that we have 3.2 million people out of the poverty and uh, 1. million out of the extreme poverty. This is something, uh, one of the figures, the best figures in the region. Uh, I think after Peru, who is doing really well. Uh, but for us, it's something that is, is the, the first time that we can do something um, 
uh, in that uh, in in that area uh, and uh, reduce uh, this 12.6 with the multidimensional poverty uh, that is uh, the the way that we are uh, measure the, the poverty today. Um, so this is just I, I would like to take some figures uh, how we are working in other issues that is not the peace agreement um, is the the you know is to prepare the country for the peace agreement. This is what we are doing in this in those years. This is not that we are going to start after the peace agreement that we have to change infrastructure that we have to change education. Is that we are doing in in, in eight, seven years all these things. Now with the peace agreement we start already in, in, a, in, a, in a very, very uh, positive position in, in those areas. So this is um, something that we believe that if we start the implementation in some years, something like five uh, to 10 years, Colombia is going to be really different and, uh, and change uh, dramatically. Um, one of the most important issues in the peace implementation agreement is uh, the coca crops. This is one of the of the um, subjects that we raised with the FARC during the negotiation process, and uh, and we have an, an agreement that could be, I think, the one of the best agreement that we have with them because if we really arrive to eradicate uh, the coca crops, uh, it's not only for Colombia; it's something wonderful for the region and never just for the world. Uh, and this is something that um, we are looking to do it in uh, the best manner possible. Uh, what happened today? We have 150,000 150, hectares in, in coca. Uh, this is a, a measure by the United Nations. Um, and uh, the idea is uh, in one year, one year in, in May, May to May, May this year to May next year, we are going to have 50,000 eradicated by force of eradication by the army forces, and 50,000 for the substitution of crops with the, uh, uh, with the peasants. An agreement with the peasants and with the communities where the coca is, um, is in, in, in uh, uh, planted uh, for a long time. This is not, this is not something that uh, the, the recent years is something that decades that they unfortunately Colombia um, have uh, this, uh, this uh, issue so complicated. So what we are doing in the, in the substitution of crops, we have an agreement with families. Already we signed 80,000 families that want to go to a legal crops uh, we are giving money for two years, month by month, until they have the legal crop producing. Um, we are giving help with, uh, you know, with the agricultural project, with technology, and we support them to, to have finally something uh, for again, uh, their lives. Um, and this is going to be uh, from here to Two years or three years, uh, we, 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 we hope and, and we are working for that, a change the life of, of those communities. Um, at the same time, we are doing something that is, uh, is quite incredible. Colombia, 60% of the land in Colombia is not legalized. So we are working in that also, that the people have legalized their lands where they live. Um, and this is something that we are doing with uh, France and uh, Germany uh, for, 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 for do that work that is not easy. Could you imagine a country as big as Colombia and uh, you have to legalize each part of, uh, of, uh, of that territory and, um, and this is something that for the, for the peasant is so important. When you see, uh, I don't know if the, the ambassador of Ecuador is here, uh, when you see why in Ecuador there are not uh, coca crops, and why in Colombia there are, and just it's a line, or just it's a river. And um, one of the, one of the points is that, is that the, because in Ecuador, the, the peasants have uh, their land legalized. And for doing something illegal, 
is, could be you know, in risk their land. So this is so important and we realize that because of, of what, happened, what happened in Ecuador. So we started already uh, doing that. I want to see and to show you this picture. Um, the green that is more clear and uh, more light in the right side, this is the coca crops. And in the same one time, when you see the other, it's a cafe, it's coffee. This is what happened in Colombia. You know, and this is so complicated. The, the geography is complicated, um, and, and, and the peasants and the communities organize their life you know, half illegal, half legal. So this is what we have in front of us. We have to legalize everything. Um, and um, one of the, there are a couple of products that for Colombia is, is part of the Colombian life. That one is coffee and one is cacao. Um, and so for the moment, this is when, with the two products that we're going to stop. But this is part of, um, you know, this is one of the most important parts of the agreement that the FARC is, is, at the end of the day, helping and convince the peasants and the communities to change the illegal crops for the legal crops. The next one is uh, when they laid down arms. They finally made the last time uh, two months ago. Uh, a figure, a very high figure, is like 9,000. Uh, 9,000 weapons, explosive grenades, mines, um, and, um, and, and, and it's really incredible because at the beginning, the Colombians didn't believe that they could happen. They always said, you know, they never give uh, lay down arms. They never give the arms. And finally, uh, it's, it's a fact. Um, it's, um, this is, this is uh, the, Maybe the, the issue most important in the, in the last in the last week in Colombia is that finally uh, the United Nations have the arms of the FARC. They they have become um, a monument. One in the United States in the, the UN, one in La Habana, and one in Colombia. After after this exercise, um, the the next one is something that is um, one of the most sad part of this, the history of Colombia is the landmines. Colombia is the second country in the world with more mines after Afghanistan. And uh, this is something that we have to, to, to do very quickly uh, because of the danger for those communities that now they, they feel free, but they are, they are not totally free because of that, because of the mines. So we, we are working very well, and the international community helped us a lot in that in, in, in this in this uh, issue. Uh, Norway and the United States uh, organized a fund uh, one year ago with uh, something like 100 million dollars, with many other countries that's uh, uh, giving money for that. Um, and this is um, this is something that um, like the most. Uh, complicate uh, things that we have in front. Because the, nobody knows where they're there. The FARC knows a little bit, but they no, don't know exactly where. And um, they are putting the mines for years and years. So they are in, in different parts of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the deep, uh, of, of the different terrain. So this is going to be complicated, but um, we start already, and we hope in 2022 we are free of mines. The next one is uh, what I, I tell you about the, the land formalization. Um, we have already this uh, 8,600 land titles, and, and we hope uh, in, from here to two, three years that we have the whole country formalized. Um, and now is um, what we are doing now in the in the implementation process. We have, for the first time in a peace agreement, uh, there are a transitional justice. 
the people have to pay for uh, war crimes and crimes against humanity is not uh, an amnesty as in the past or other, other process. Um, now it's uh, become much more complicated uh, because we, we are signed, Colombia is um, signed the, the Roma Statute, the um, Criminal Court of Justice. So um, we, even it, since the beginning, we knew that the, that uh, the people have to go to. Uh, it's no, it's not a jail, if I can say a jail like uh, uh, normal. You believe what is a jail, but it's a restriction of the freedom. They can go out uh, any 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 part. Uh, for uh, this is in between, and this is part of the agreement between five and eight years. Uh, the tribunal starts in, we hope, in a couple of months, and uh, the judges they are already already chosen, and uh, they start uh, judge the the people from the FARC and the militaries also. There is not only for for the FARC, the for for the militaries, and then they called for the third. The third is the people, the the civil, the you know the so the people from the society uh, that. In, in, in some case, support the conflict, or were uh, in the in the middle of the conflict, uh, but in, in 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 very extreme cases, is not because they have to give money for for you know for the paramilitaries or for the FARC, is that they were participant in uh, in a big crimes, uh, the 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 in a special way. I mean. Uh, uh, it's not like permanent, but you know, in in a um, like like uh, when no, it's not only that they participate in one crime or, or two or whatever. It's uh, in a permanent way. Yeah. So um, this is what the tribunal is going to to decide. So the attorney general is going to to send to them. Uh, the cases and the judges are going to decide it. So the, the important thing is that we are going to set up and we hope uh, the Congress is going to approve the law soon um, for a start and we hope they start in, in, in one or two months. What happened in that moment, and this is why I, I don't know if you read some newspapers about Colombia or some news, uh, we're in the middle of a campaign. Uh, President Santos' uh, terms is over in uh, mm, I was next year. Uh, we have elections in May, and we are already in the middle of a campaign. And as you know, and many politicians know very well, that everything is uh, in a campaign is, is complicated things in the Congress. Uh, so um, the peace process or part of the of the peace agreement uh, are in in the debate, and uh, the people in the Congress are. are Working in a, not in a speedy manner, but uh, <laughs> taking taking their time, and um, is uh, this is why we have not have yet uh, the law of the of the tribunal of uh, of the justice. But um, in my case, you know, I, I am so optimistic. I think Colombia is living a, um, a moment that I never believe the Colombians, and um, I hope. Uh, our our politicians realize how important is the moment and how important is for Colombia um, to really have the peace and uh, is through these uh, laws that we are going to have the peace. Um, but now we have uh, plenty of opportunities in Colombia. You know, it's, uh, it's the half of a country where uh, isolated by the conflict. So now we have plenty of opportunity for investors. Uh, the tourism, Col Colombia is a, a beautiful, a beautiful country that uh, many people uh, in my age and in that generation, uh, we don't know the country because of the conflict. So it's, a, it's an open, uh, a totally open new, new country for many people, not only Colombians, but foreigners. Uh, so we are working very hard. The minister here is working very hard in open uh, that part of, of Colombia, and um, I think this is one of our uh, big issue in, in the future. Uh, the other part is uh, the infrastructure and the um, 
the agricultural projects. And let me show you this one. And um, I, I want to show something that is, uh, is incredible, uh, uh, well done by the uh, chief of the Expresso. Two years ago, I, we have a, a meeting and saying, you know, when the peace agreement is over, we need um, that the people interested in Colombia, for, especially for the products and the products where they are in the conflict zones. And um, he came to Colombia and he organized, uh, he organized with the Coffee Federation to buy a coffee from a very, very special region where the conflict was so complicated, that is El Caquetá. Um, and uh, now he has this coffee in the, in the Nespresso um, stores that calls Aurora de Paz. And it's the message is that when you buy a coffee, um, that coffee, you are helping families from that uh, region to do a, a legal thing, a legal product, and, 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 um, and an illegal activity. So this is the kind of thing that we are looking for. Um, so I hope when you go to an espresso store, you're looking for that, and uh, you buy and uh, you buy it and, and drink a, a Colombian coffee thing that is, uh, this is part of the piece. And this is what we, we need in these agribusiness uh, um, activities. This is a tourism. This is one of uh, a, a very beautiful place. And I, I put the, the picture because I want to tell you just a story. This is in the, the worst part of, of the conflict. It's uh, also, also El Meta. It's near Caquetá. It's El Meta. When one of the biggest uh, members of the FARC live, uh, and, uh, and he was killed, he calls El, El Mono Jojoy, one, one of you know, the, the worstest. And uh, nobody knew that. So today we have 15,000 tourism. But before that, only 1,000 tourists by per year. Nobody kno knew that. Um, so this is a beautiful place. But now you, you can, with this, you can imagine the change of the many, many places in Colombia that we don't know and we are discovering. Um, the next one, I think, uh, this one is a, a really a beautiful national park. It's a new one also. Uh, that called Chiribiquete Park. Um, it's like the size of Switzerland. And it's a beautiful, beautiful park with uh, something that, in, and it just discovered a couple of years ago. Um, it's just to imagine how complicated it was to be in, in, in to cover a military, the, the country. Um, and um, so we're going to have a tax benefits for that, for the uh, small hotels to, to be in 350 municipalities where we classify as the most complicated for the conflict. So the, the hotel chains that wants to go there, they have a, a tax benefit um, and, uh, for 20 years. So the idea is to develop a, the, the zones and develop the, um, this, uh, this kind of, um, you know, of activities. And when, what we are doing in the foreign office, in, uh, in, um, in foreign affairs, we start with the free trade agreements. We now we have a 15 and we are, we are negotiating uh, two or three more uh, with Japan, with Turkey, and with um, with Japan, with Turkey, and with uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, and Singapore in the, in the framework of the Pacific Alliance. We are uh, now negotiating a, a free trade agreement. And um, now we have finally opened um, uh, uh, many quantity of, uh, of countries, and uh, we hope with India we are going to start something uh, like that uh, soon. But this is the, the only way, you know, to in this uh, globalized world to to have uh, opportunities. Um, the next is um, something I 
for you maybe it's not something important, but you can imagine how important it is for Colombians. We as Colombians need visa, or need visa for all over the world because of narco-traffic, because of uh, the human rights, but especially for narco-traffic. And finally, in these uh, seven years, we have 73 con 72 countries that withdraw the visa of Colombians. And it's like you have, uh, you have the freedom to take your passport and you can go wherever you go. You want is something different, and, 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 and we work very hard in that is to show that Colombia is not a country of narco-traffic, Colombia is not a country of bad people, and, um, and this is what when the Schengen was uh, withdrawn. Um, so this is, um, and this is the way for have more investors, more tourism, and, uh, and, uh, and the Colombians can go uh, uh, to, to tourism to other, other parts of the world. Um, uh, here, you know, I have a couple of projects that uh, is like every minister, every minister have to do for the post-conflict. And uh, since the beginning, since 2010, I organized a couple of, of projects that I would like to share because it's really, really where, where you can change the life of, of people and the young people. This, uh, this young uh, um, is, uh, people there is from the most, most violent municipalities in Colombia. So I have 25 municipalities with the, with, with the recruitment of uh, children for the conflict were very high where they didn't have opportunities of nothing, just to go to school and, and that's it. So I have already 107,000 children who goes to all over the world to play, to do sports, and, uh, and to do music. And this, you can imagine how important it is for them when they come back to their municipalities and to their towns. Um, and uh, exchange with the others, how is the world, how could be the opportunities, how they can have dreams, how you know, they can believe that, they, that the world is much more than their, their violence and their bad situation. And, uh, and this has been uh, really a, a wonderful project. Um, they have been in 35 countries in the world, and it's uh, 43 already. Or three countries in the world. And this is thinking in the post conflict. How you can give opportunity to the people who were involved in the conflict, um, and uh, and this is something extraordinary. Um, the other is in the same 25 municipalities. Uh, I organize um, a, cent a community centers for children for spend the day when they go out from the school, they leave in the school, to go to the, the, their this, uh, community centers and uh, have you know, the opportunity for uh, computers, um, music, uh, dance, uh, many things. And it's also incredible how these children, they don't have, the problem is that they don't have any, any opportunities in those places. So uh, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, that is not normal that they can, this kind of, of projects uh, I have been doing and, um, and it's incredibly important. And this is what uh, President Santos wants, that each ministry have to do something for the, for the, for the peace agreement, for the post-conflict situation, that everybody have to, to, to change the life of the people. Um, and um, now the great challenge today is the reconciliation. That is not easy. Um, as you know, the human being is very strange. Uh, 50 years of, uh, in war, 50 years in violence, and um, having people in their families killed, or kidnapping, or with uh, extortion, or so many uh, complicated things. And when we have the peace, uh, now we are in, in trouble. And now we have problems to 
to think together and to build together a, a new country. So this is what we have in front of us. Um, um, I vote for reconciliation. Uh, the way that we have to, to be together and to build a, a different country. Um, and um, now we are, uh, we are in a quite a polarized uh, country, I suppose because of uh, the campaign, the electoral campaign, I suppose because it's quite difficult when you have to change your mind um, totally. And um, you are living in a country that always there are something um, like uh, like the the bad thing that when everybody's without dying people in in in, in the regions uh, or in the military hospital there are anybody uh, and uh, and there are not people killing for for the war we are in trouble for you know for for accept that and, and have a, a better life. But um, we hope uh, this is something that takes some years. We have um, an institute in uh, the University of Notre Dame that is Koch Institute. And the Koch Institute what is, is doing for many years is to compare the different peace process in the world and the different peace agreements in the world. And uh, when you see that the matrix they put in the Colombian peace process, it's quite incredible, the, the results. But because you see that 75% of the agreement is for transform the country. It's a transformation of Colombia. Uh, and the other, the other there are much more with the amnesties and with the, with the laid on arms and but more really of a deep, Deep, deep uh, manner that the, this this accord is is change uh, the country, um, and I think uh, this is complicated for 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 many people. You know, unfortunately, sometimes the war is uh, there are many many people who who are behind that, and uh, and this is what we has we are, why it's, it's so difficult. But we are going to have. A different country. We are going to have a country with, uh, with really with plenty of opportunities, with more than four million hectares in land for for become um, for produce, and um, and this is what we we want is to invite to invite the countries to come to Colombia, to invite the people to go in a and uh, make tourism and uh, a new uh, um, a country that maybe for many people was impossible to go because of because of the violence. So this is what we have in front. Uh, um, we have to reconciliate us. This is an internal problem. But for for uh, for the foreigners to to come to see a a country that suffers so much, but now is. Um, <coughs> is in a, one of the best moments in, in history. Thank you very much. Uh, hats off to you, Madam Foreign Minister, for such an inspirational talk and such a professional presentation about what your country has been through and where it stands today. In this region, South Asia, this is really a breath of, uh, uh, you know, optimism, hope, because we've also seen conflicts. But when you talk from a country of 49 million coming out of conflict and reconciliation and nation building, and the way you have talked covered multiple dimensions of your nation building and the leadership, it's really very inspiring. And uh, so I'd like to really compliment you uh, for, for the talk that you've given. Uh, we have uh, some time, at least, for, for questions. So uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions. Uh, but again, uh, I am a little un unfair as a chair. I wouldn't like uh, long uh, questions. Be very sharp, OK? So you have. Your Excellency, I want to know what your government is doing 
for the protection and preservation of the indigenous people in your country. Please. Yours. Yeah, it's uh, heartening that you have brought more than three million people above the poverty line and about one million people above the extreme poverty line. Could you kindly enlighten us what's the criteria you have developed to define poverty and extreme poverty? Thank you. <laughs> Please. Uh, three questions and then maybe uh, Would you please say something about Colombia and its neighborhood policy? Colombia, Colombia and its neighbors. Ah, neighbors. Okay, Okay, one more. Yes. Three questions. Yes. Uh, one person has already asked question about indigenous uh, peoples. I would like to know how many tribes are there, how many languages are spoken other than Spanish uh, by the indigenous peoples and by other people. Another small person, you talked about agriculture. What are the main crops that Colombia produces in agriculture? Thank you. It's all yours, I think. Yes. Um, the, the indigenous population in Colombia is, all, is something like 3% of the whole population. We are 49 million people. Um, and uh, there are, I think they are speaking something like 50, 85, 85 different languages. When I showed you the Chiribiquete Park, uh, do you remember the huge one that I say that is like Switzerland? Okay, inside that park, there are indigenous people who never had contact with anybody. Uh, it's something that we just discovered that. Is, uh, and this is the kind of, uh, uh, for you imagine uh, the, 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 the people that they are in, in those part of Colombia that we, because of the conflict, we couldn't uh, stay. Um, the indigenous people have their territories um, and um, we are, you know, we are treating really with, uh, with well policies. Uh, now, if you see what happened in the in the recent days, and you see in the newspaper about, about the indigenous people, it's because of the coca, coca crops again. Uh, we are in the middle of a, a complicated thing because it's not only the indigenous or the communities uh, behind all this. There are a criminal organization, and um, they are make, making trouble for for the for the coca eradication. Um, and this is why those days the indigenous have been uh, some uh, involved in, 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 in some troubles. But we, they have the, the, the policies. Uh, we respect the government and, and the state respect their policies. Um, they are represented in the Congress. And they are represented in the cities. Um, and um, they have their own territories. Um, and as I told you, it's like 3% of the population. Uh, the case of the extreme poverty. Um, poverty is when there's just one minimum salary uh, for per family. Uh, with that, and we measure about the access of services. Uh, it depends if they have or not, they, they don't have the, the services. Um, and now they are working, maybe, maybe the Minister of Trade can explain much better than, than I am, about the multidimensional uh, measure of, of poverty that, is, that we are doing now. Um, maybe Maria Lorena. Would you like to? Just yeah. to, would you like to come? Yes, yeah, yes, she likes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. The, the, the poverty line uh, is usually measured by income only, but uh, Colombia decided to use the multidimensional measure that it says like seven uh, components. 
One is health, another is education, another is housing, um, another is income. So we are, uh, this is good because we are improving the quality of life, not only income of this poor people. Yes. I think so. Um, the question about the Colombia and the neighborhoods. Um, we have a, a, a extraordinary good relation with Ecuador since uh, seven, the last seven years, um, working very hard in security, in uh, opportunity for the people who live in the, at the border. Uh, we have um, a meeting of the cabinets, the, inter the, the whole cabinet of the, the two countries once a year. Um, but uh, in, and we work in, in health, in, in productive projects, in uh, education, in, in so many different fields, and, and, we, and we have a, really a, a good relation. Um, with, uh, with Venezuela, uh, it's a little bit complicated. You know, Venezuela is in, in, in some troubles, internal troubles, and we have the complicated thing is that we have many Venezuelan um, coming already in Colombia. We have something like 450,000 uh, people uh, here who are already in, in Colombia. Um, Venezuela was so generous with Colombia uh, in the 80s and the 70s when they received, uh, Venezuelans received uh, many Colombians because of the conflict. So we are, we are doing the same thing. We are receiving the Venezuelans. Uh, we are, have opened the border. Every day at the, in one of the cities at the border, that is Cúcuta, arrive 3,000 people every day to buy food and uh, medicines and go to the hospitals. Um, this is something complicated for us, but we are doing and we are open and, um, and we are still helping. And we hope that finally they, they can you know, get together, opposition and government, uh, and try to get a solution uh, that, you know, Venezuela deserves. Um, but in, in, uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, difficult to have um, a relation, a normal relation with, with them, but I have a, uh, I have a, a, a permanent communication with the Ministry, uh, the Foreign Affairs of Venezuela, um, when we have problems we can, we, we talk, problems I mean something at the border uh, that happens uh, once in a while. Um, but hoping that Venezuela could, uh, could be, uh, you know, go, from, go out from that crisis uh, soon and, 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 and can restore their, their dialogue in, 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 in Venezuela. Um, with other countries, we have a very good relation with Peru, extraordinary relation. We are part of the Pacific Alliance uh, with Chile and Mexico. Um, we are working very hard uh, in, in that. I think it's one of the best mechanisms of integration. Uh, we want just the, uh, to, it's, it's not an ideological uh, mechanism, it's not a political mechanism, it's just an economic and trade mechanism. And this is what we are working on, and, and, and this is what uh, for Colombia is, um, is really important. Um, with Brazil also, we have a, a very good relation uh, and Panama. Uh, it's, uh, you know, as normal as the borders that they have one sometimes thinks that uh, are, are quite complicated. But um, in, in, the, in, in general, we have a very good relation with our, our neighbors. Will you take two more questions? Uh, okay. Brief, please. Yeah, Excellency, I think uh, you are very excellent in the sports also, Olympic Games, soccer and other games. So how you train your s school kids and other? And second, you are excellent, recognized by beauty contest globally. So they are also being trained. <laughs> what would he say? Right? Uh, Your Excellency, I'd like to ask you about what are the rehabilitation measures that you're taking for the former uh, FARC uh, cadres who you'd be integrating into the mainstream of mm -hmm. your society. Thank you. Part, part of the uh, reintegration and political and social and economic from the uh, far people to to you know to the society 
One is a political one, and they become a political party already, and uh, they are going to participate in elections. Um, in the social and economic, uh, we are giving already, and they, uh, we have 9,000 um, people with a account, account, bank account that the government is giving month by month uh, what, what we finally um, um, have an agreement. And uh, for two years, the idea is that they can, with that money, leave without come back to the, you know to the to the violence and and, and to the bad uh, things and um, and with a money that they start a, a project you know a, a project in their lives and they they have already that money uh, month by month they have um, they they have already the amnesty something like six thousand or 7,000 of members of the FARC are already with the amnesty so they can go wherever they want uh, or be together with the, with the group or, or be in, 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 in their families or in their towns. Um, and, and this is like the start of the implementation process. They want to have uh, some uh, productive projects together and, and this is where we are start. Uh, with some projects uh, like coffee or cacao that is not only for the FARC, it's for the whole communities that are, that they are in, in those zones. And, um, and this is what we are just start. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, according to a recent report, uh, the establ political establishment of the country has only 75%, uh, only 7% of the citizens have approval. So all these policies, whatever like you spoke just now, like how Colombian citizens are cooperating on these policies? The, uh, I, sorry. He says that. But you know, the 70, when you are in government for seven years, it's very hard that the people approve you. <laughs> in the case of Colombia, that we had just only for four years, and this is the new things in Colombia. At last, the government, the President Uribe, and now President Santos, for the first time, are in eight years in, in, in government. So this is something difficult for the people, for the Colombian, to to you know to realize that the, the government have to be so so long and for for a long term. It's not it's different from other other part of the of the world. Um, but um, but uh, I think is uh, I I see that as a normal thing. Um, and now we have a, a very big uh, opposition in uh, in the in the country. Um, the former president Uribe is uh, have a, a, a many people have support him. Uh, he's part of the opposition. And I think uh, this is this is part of the democracy, and this is fine. And this is fine. The President Santos, I think, this the history is going to recognize him. The whole thing that they are doing for Colombia, the peace agreement, uh, the stop the violence, and uh, give the country an infrastructure, an education, and so many things. Uh, but this is something that uh, you that you are recognize uh, later. Not, not exactly in the moment that you are doing the peace. This is something that we learn about the other peace process. Um, but you know, um, when you feel that the people are not killed anymore, the soldiers are not killed anymore, uh, the hospitals are not with people you know, uh, hurt, this is the most important thing. Not, not the pools or, or, or the, you know, the support or not for, of the people. And we're just at the end. Uh, and it's normal. I, I think it's totally normal. We're in the middle of a campaign. Well, uh, I think uh, we have to uh, yes. draw it to a close. But uh, once again, I'd like to really uh, warmly compliment you, Your Excellency, for such a good picture and uh, for bringing this good news to our part of the world where we look for good news. It's not easy. <laughs> Afghanistan, for instance, is a smaller country in terms of population, but it has had a longer history of conflict and unrelenting violence.
yes. whereas your country has now shown that can be hoped with. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's very very uh, inspiring and edifying to hear from you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So Thank I would you. request to give give uh, Her Excellency a standing ovation, please. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the Indian Council of World Affairs, I would like to thank our esteemed speaker, Her Excellency, Mrs. Maria Angela Holguin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia, who has very lucidly shared her thoughts on a subject of great relevance, not only for Colombia, but also for our bilateral relations. I would also like to thank Ambassador Dr. Silkan Sarma for sharing the session. We extend our gratitude to you all who have, who have taken the time to be present here. May I now request you all to join us for high tea at the foray. Thank you.